Gather round, humans, wherever you roam, and admit that the waters around you have grown, and accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone or just call a fucking plumber and fix it. <laughs> but ain't that how it is? Sometimes when we look around, it feels like everyone else is drinking lemonade because life gave them lemons, and we're here concussed at the bottom of the stairs because life gave us a shit salad, kicked us in the dick, jerseyed us, a t-shirt gun blasted, an absolutely unholy fart under our hoodie, sending us down the stairs, sniffing hot ass till we hit the bottom. I know it feels that way. But there's still hope out there. I know it, I've seen it. Hope is real. It's not just a lyric in a suffocatingly acoustic religious song that you accidentally got on a Spotify mix and like you're driving and you know it's not awesome, but it's kind of nice, it's pleasant, it's simple enough, it's not gonna hurt anybody. But then it gets into the light and the king and it freaks you the fuck out. You have to listen to Baby Shark or something to bounce it out a bit. But that's kind of my point. Don't just take whatever's on the radio, on the stream, live on the feed. You're not a scavenger. You hunt for your entertainment. You're not just flipping YouTube channels. No, that's foreplay. You're zeroing in on a specific niche and grinding on that shit all night like you know what you're doing. My personal favorite obsession is watching humans car wash rugs that they find in the dump. Like the rhythmic certainty of some anonymous trash janitor slapping a total turd of a shag lump onto a satisfyingly white sci-fi floor and then going to town on it with some solvents and industrial floor cleaners. So badass they have different personalities like they're pitching a Pixar movie, beating the literal fucking demons out of these dumpster carpets until they're clean and then ready to be stepped on again. The irony's so perfect it makes me cry every time. But that's what I'm saying. I think the general malaise meringue that is the general vibe of these days has me too, so I'm bound to forget what the fuck I was talking about. But I think my point is that I'm seeking out my distractions. I'm not letting the algorithm choose for me. So why don't you pause your doom scrolling, chill the Bluetooth out, grab some physical media, pull up the antidepressants, and sit by the fire with me a bit for a second. Let the times go a-changing, because you know they are. So here's my tale. Back in 1977, Nolan Bushnell, he's the guy that founded a little company called Atari. Don't know if you've ever heard of it. And if you haven't, you're too young to be here. You should have been carted at the door. <laughs> so Nolan Bushnell attends the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions Conference in Orlando, which is like, that's what I'm saying, humans. Like, you could work for an amusement park. You could wear a tie and still do math, drink coffee like a proper nine to five, but the end result of that cr soul crushing job could be water slides. There's <laughs> hope out there, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, Nolan Bushnell is hanging out at that conference. It's like a home and garden show, but with like fun shit. And he sees someone walking around in a coyote costume. And holy shit, sure enough, turns out, Mr. Games himself was thinking of opening a pizza place. For any space aliens in the audience right now, the marriage of video games and pizza has been a long-standing, honored, blessed union in human culture. For ye who hath not ordered Pizza Hut will be doomed to suck eternal at Mario Kart. It's in the Bible, you guys. <laughs> Upon returning home with said coyote costume, Nolan Bushnell realizes that it's not a coyote costume at all, but a giant rat with a pink tail. Now. Whether or not it's because it was a shitty coyote costume or because Nolan Bushnell's never actually seen a coyote before has been lost to history. But don't freak out because more history was about to be made. Bushnell decides because he already has the costume and it would be a shame to waste a rat suit paving the way for all bands like Fish to just like take whatever the fuck stupid shit they find in the basement to the stage and make it work. Changes the name of his restaurant to Rick Rat's Pizza. And then his marketing team went, no. Maybe we don't name this kid's pizza arcade after what sounds like a cocaine-railed criminal attorney working out of a laundromat. <laughs> and instead opt to call the place Chuck E. Cheeses. <laughs> now, uh, somebody was like, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and that touched me. I'm like touched right now. That was so fucking wholesome. <laughs> now, a pizza arcade was actually a dream that Nolan Bushnell had before starting Atari because at the time, arcades were mostly for adults and kind of had a rough reputation back in the 70s because they were where the cool kids hung out. Bushnell had been to Disneyland recently, though. He saw Disney's delightfully racist enchanted tiki room and was amazed. 
because that thing had like hundreds of animatronic birds singing songs and entertaining the room without any human having to memorize lines or do lines to stay awake. <laughs> you just press play and let the robots do the work. He chose pizza because, quote, the wait time and the build schedule, very few components, not too many ways to screw it up, which is kind of a comment that could start a fist fight in Chicago. But he <laughs> is from California, and they don't know shit about pizza. So, he fi it's true. So, he figures, I figured that would land in this room. So, he figures, what if the clean kids could hang out on the wharf and play games like the smoking kids do? Bring it all inside, give them pizza and games. But what if the parents won't someone give them a fucking break? <laughs> Turns out, Bushnell already had that idea covered because he was at the Tiki Room, baby. And yeah, their accents were offensive, but the parents were just as into it as the kids. So you couldn't have alcohol at an arcade at the time. Bushnell figured, why not an entertainment venue? And the first ever Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater was open in San Jose, California in 1977. The kids rocked the games and the pizza while the adults drank in the back watching robots play rock and roll and do stand-up. Now, the only problem with this post-apocalyptic sci-fi lounge concept is that the kids kept heading into the back to watch the giant rat tell dirty jokes because it's a fucking robot, man, just like in Disneyland. So they had to soften the vibe a little bit, making it less a back room for Batman villains and changing Charles E. And Char well, the E stands for entertainment, by the way. Charles Entertainment Cheese into a mouse. <laughs> Meantime, they wanted to expand because the idea of a local pizza casino with singing carnival cyborgs for children is just too good an idea not to be in every strip mall in America. <laughs> so, Bushnell starts franchising and it is here. He meets Robert Brock, who was more a mover and a shaker than Bushnell's jittery cabaret Muppets. In 1979, Brock starts pizza show biz to develop pizza time theaters in 16 states across the southern and midwestern United States. If you're starting to hear For the Love of Money by the OJs in your internal soundtrack for this, you're right to do it. Because there was gold in those pizza saloons. <laughs> it is here that Brock meets Aaron Fector, hotshot animatronic inventor on the streets, and they start show biz pizza. Because Brock figures these kids' robots are better, faster, and sexier than Bushnell's, which, like, don't get it twisted. They all look like someone stuffed a sofa with a broken automatic gate that could at any moment explode and burn the room down. But Fector's was smoother and did more stuff. So, Brock cuts ties with Bushnell, taking these ideas on the road and opening Showbiz Pizza in 1980, which is exactly the same, except the band was going to be called the Rock of Fire Explosion. And instead of Chuck E. Cheese, you had a giant bear named Billy Bob Broccoli who looked like one of the Country Bear Jamboree Bears' insane cousins blasted on whippets. <laughs> So, Bushnell sues Brock and Fector. Brock countersues. They settle it out of court. And with the rise of arcade games, both Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz operate simultaneously in their respective districts, igniting the Pizza Wars. <laughs> For like a decade-ish, these two houses, both alike in dignity in the fair suburbs where we lay our scene, were at war. Fechner's Rock of Pirate Explosion were redressed as Munch's Make Believe Band, which on one hand was probably a bit better because the Rock of Fire's piano player was a super racist gorilla character, and the Munch's was a funky purple mop creature, but no less barbaric for a kid to come back to a show only to find that the characters they knew and loved were skinned and then covered in another character's face, like Ed Gein's unseen pitch for a family fun zone. Then Chuck E. Cheese started losing millions. Finally, they filed for bankruptcy. And then Showbiz Pizza actually buys Chuck E. Cheese and takes them over. But then, Fector, smelling pizza blood in the water or the sauce, however you want to take this metaphor, but we're almost done here. Don't make that face! If you can follow Vanderpump rules, you can fucking follow this. <laughs> So he takes his robot elsewhere, and now all showbiz pizzas become Chuck E. Cheese, only to have the arcade scene crash. Because why go out when you can crush Pizza Hut pizza and Mario Kart at home? Getting your anthropomorphic rock band fixed from TV. It's cozy, or you don't have to dress up. And now, here we are. Last week, November 15, 2023, it was announced that all animatronics have been pulled from every Chuck E. Cheese location, except for one in Northridge, California, where it shall remain, forever swaying lazily side to side while their weird eyes blink too slowly and sometimes out of sync. 
Well, that's your tale for tonight, humans. Thank you for gathering around from wherever you roam as the times are a-changing. And ain't that just the way it is sometimes? Take a moment for yourself. Pack the car. Drive to Northridge, California. That's a quest you can go on. That's an adventure you can have. Go and see Charles Entertainment Cheese. Still going. Survivor of the Pizza Wars. And a living legend that you can see like the adults of the Chuck E. Cheese of old needing a tactile distraction from the children who run the world. Like I was saying, there's still hope out there. You're a hunter, so go get some. I love you. Good night.